Welcome everybody to the seventh class, class number seven of the Destiny Group Mentor School. Our subject is, uh, for class number seven, passion, the fire of your purpose. Matthew eleven twelve says, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Quite an interesting verse, wouldn't you say? What in the world does it mean? And I've heard all kinds of interpretations, but let's look at it just for a minute. Write down the word, and if you have your page, you don't have to, it's right there. But the word violent. Violent in the Hebrew is chamak. And forgive me if I, you know, goof up the Hebrew pronunciation, but my best understanding is violent is the Hebrew word chamak. To damage, to maltreat, to harm, and to force. So this particular word, the Hebrew word in this instance is negative. Oftentimes what we connect violence to, would you all agree? Yes. We have a lot of violence in our country right now and it's not good. It would be falling into the line of to damage, to maltreat, to harm, or to force. But there's another word for violence. And this word is the Greek word, bazo. <laughs> bazo, or bastis. And that means to seize, to press. Are you ready for this? To have passion. Mm -hmm. Isn't that what we're talking about tonight? Or actually to be passionate and to have compassion. Wow. So we can begin to see that there are two definitions for violence. It's two different spectrums. And then there's also Hebrew words that mean the positive as this Greek word. And then there's also Greek words that mean the negative, like the Hebrew word we talked about. So they're just two different. You've got to know what the scripture is talking about when it says the word violence. Because we automatically, like we said, think of violence in the negative, people beating each other up. Yeah. <laughs> or, or, you know, debating on certain media. <clears throat> anyway, <laughs> let's get off of that. But look at what it says here. Everybody say context. 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 We've got to know the context mm -hmm. of Scripture. Yes. Yes. This is going to be very important when it comes to mentoring. Know what it says in Matthew chapter 11 and verse 12. It doesn't just say the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. But it has something before that. It says from the days of what? John the Baptist until now or until that point where Jesus was speaking specifically. Hmm. So from the days of John the Baptist until when Jesus stood there saying what he said after baptism, the kingdom suffered violence. You might want to write this word down. Another word for this would be a shift. Whenever the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven moves forward, it will cause a shift that will also shake things up. Amen. This is really important to understand because on one side you will have people violent in a negative way, in corrupted systems. And on the other side you'll have violence in people ready to seize the kingdom of God. Are you passionate about the kingdom of God? I am. That's why you all are here. You know, you had a busy day. 
right? That's why you all are here online. You had a busy day, but look, you keep coming. Amen. It's yes. like you, you're seeking treasure. Yes. That is like a pearl of great price. Amen. Amen. And so Amen. that's what we're here Amen. talking about. We, the, from the days of John the Baptist till now, Jesus said, in other words, a specific time frame, there came a shift. The kingdom, suffer, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. So there is a clash. And there are those that are shaken because they're in world systems, corrupted world systems. And then there are those who are energized and ready and, and passionate about moving forward in the kingdom. Does that make sense, everybody? Amen. Because you better be passionate about it. Because that's what we'll, God will use to carry you through. Because not everybody's going to appreciate you. Because some of them you just thought you couldn't do without. But guess what? God's going to show you a new company. Yeah. And we love everybody, right? I mean, we don't want to just burn bridges. No. So from yeah. what Jesus was mentioning there was from the time of John the Baptist until that point where he was baptized, the kingdom suffered violence and the violent take it by force. Now, let me tell you something. Again, I want to, you know, mentor, mentoring uh, isn't just telling you what to think. It's to make you think. Amen? Amen? So I'm not going to tell you what to think. And what I say may stir you up. Yes. It may cause you to go on a search. And I hope so. Yes. Because I certainly don't know it all. But I will tell you this. That we as kingdom citizens don't have to take the kingdom by force. As far as trying to get in. Right. Because it's your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Mm. Amen? Amen. But what we do is we are energized to bring the kingdom to the world. Yes. Does that make sense? Amen. So I hear people say, we got to take the kingdom by force. Guess what? It's already yours. We don't have but what we do is we seize the principles of the kingdom to take it to the world. There are those, as we said, energetically opposed to transition. Have you noticed? Mm -hmm. And those that are energetically pressing into transition. Mm, mm, mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, that actually will define your company. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. I'll there wait. we go. I'll walk up <laughs> yeah. <laughs> passion. I love the word passion. Yes. Passion is motivational power. Not just an emotion. Passion is a motivational power. Not just an emotion. And when you're passionate, of course you'll have emotions. Right. But that's not what defines passion. Passion is constant. Whether you feel it or not, it's there. It's not an emotion. Passion is a motivational power. Wow. And you got it. Yes. Passion, now get this. I really want to go slow because this needs to sink in. Passion is more than a desire. It includes a desire. But it's more than just a desire, but a perpetual fire. It includes desire. But more than that, it's a perpetual fire. Some other words that define passion. Mm -hmm. Has anybody ever heard of zeal? Mm -hmm. Another word, as we said, is desire, but write this one down, drive. Mm -hmm. Another word for passion is drive. Yep. Mm -hmm. A craving. And again, not an occasional craving, but a motivational craving. It means you're always hungry for what God has. You can never get enough. And affection. So passion includes affection. Now, let me tell you why it's important to get in touch with your passion. Because it produces creativity. 
The devil is so mad that we presented this class tonight. He's so mad that these people are sitting in here and that you're online because he did not want you to hear what I just said. But it's too late. Because your passion produces creativity. And you ain't seen nothing yet to what you're going to create. Woohoo! Amen. Some of you are going to create businesses that have never been in the world before. So it produces creativity. And I put this on your sheet, but if you don't have it out there, innovation. We talked a little bit about that in one class. What else does your passion reveal? Strength. Strength. Mm -hmm. Production. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for this? God is going to produce twice as much in half the time. <laughs> Twice. Y'all receive that? He's going to produce twice as much in half the time. Passion also produces strategies. I'm talking about God-ordained passion. It produces strategies and ideas. I, I believe we are in the most exciting days. I really do. I believe that we are in days of... More innovation, mm -hmm. more entrepreneurialism, mm -hmm. more ideas than we've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. More inventions. Mm -hmm. Praise God. More creativity. Mm -hmm. God ordained passion. God ordained passion. Mm -hmm. Is more than just to excite, but it's to ignite mm -hmm. a prophetic mandate. Right. More, okay, it's more. God ordained passion is more than just to excite you, but it's to ignite your prophetic mandate. Wow. You have a mandate given by God before you were born. And your passion ignites it. Of course we get excited in our passion mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the passion is still there whether you're excited or not mm -hmm. right. but your passion does more than just excite you it ignites you mm -hmm. passion is not focused on pampering you <laughs> but on preparing and positioning you wow. i don't know if you remember but a few weeks back preparing. in class number whatever <laughs> We talked a little bit about passion and said, passion is a hint to your purpose. Yes. Passion is not purpose, but passion is a hint to your purpose. Your purpose is who you are, and passion is the well you draw from to understand it. Wow. Passion is not your purpose, right? But passion gives you a hint to your purpose. What are you passionate about? Mm -hmm. Whatever you're passionate about, that's a hint. Mm -hmm. Then vision begins to give you the why. All right, so here we go. Mm -hmm. Passion is motivated by purpose and vision. So passion is set prophetically. When you begin to... See, your passion is ignited. Generally speaking, God-ordained passion isn't ignited for, for what you're, where you're at right now. It's igniting you for where you're going. Mm -hmm. that make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our passion is not set in things as they appear today. If you look at the way it is right now, that's throwing a wet blanket on your passion. <laughs> you are always where you're going. You're never really here. You're always where you're going. 
I tell people that a lot of people feel like visionaries are crazy because they're never here. They're always telling you where they're at. And they only come here long enough to tell you. <laughs> right? Passion is not set on a task, but on goals that advance your purpose. And what I mean by that is you don't use up all your passion just for what you're doing right now. <laughs> That's good. Your passion is set on goals that advance your purpose. Mm. So a task, would you all agree? A yes. task is yes. just part of a goal. Yes. 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 It just gets you a part of it. Yes. Would that make sense? Yeah. But if you focus on a task and think that's your goal, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. when that's over, you think you have no worth. That's why a lot of pastors yeah. who said, my vision is to build a large church. When that church got built, suddenly they feel worthless because now they, have to do. they accomplished that and they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So passion is long term. Passion is well beyond your current task. The most opportune time for the devil to attack you is right after a victory. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. mm -hmm. He doesn't even bother you after a failure. He wants to see you relaxed after your latest victory. Because he knows you're sitting back on your laurels and say, look what happened. And so that's when he'll try to tempt you or drag you away or distract you. So after a victory, you still need to stay on guard. You still need to say, we have not fully arrived yet. Because this victory was, this success was just a succession to the next success. That's it. Success is success. Success is not an achievement. Mm -hmm. Success is not an accomplishment. Mm -hmm. Success is succession. It continues. It's what builds into the next level. <coughs> not to say we can't celebrate our accomplishments, of course. Right. But we can't rest and say, we've arrived. But you begin now to prepare for the next succession. All right? That's why, isn't it amazing? God is not going to give us awards. He's going to reward us. Wow. And he waits until it's all culminated. Whereas everybody today is getting an award. I got this award, so now, therefore, I've arrived. Wait a minute, arrive where? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the best is yet to come. <laughs> so passion is beyond a task. It's set on goals that advance purpose. Now, this is where I want to get into the meat of this tonight. <laughs> you say, have we had meat? Yep, we have, but look at this. You can be passionate about something. And this is really important. You can be passionate about something, but that may not be your primary passion. Mm -hmm. And some people get off on this. They assume because they feel passionate about something, that must be their primary passion. And it's actually a distraction from wow. what they're truly passionate about. <laughs> Purpose is who we are. Vision is why we are. Passion is the well that we draw from. And mission is what and when we do something. Mm -hmm. We can't call our vision something we want to do. Because vision is why we want to do it. Mm -hmm. And if you know why we want to do it, then mission will do it. This is so important. Mm -hmm. Kingdom passion is driven by God-mandated purpose. If your passion is not driven by God's purpose, you will get off into failure or error, or thinking you're succeeding. Mm. Just because everybody's wild about you doesn't mean you're doing what's right. Mm -hmm. Write it down. This is so important. We've got to learn to focus. Focus. Make the main thing the main thing. You know, I know we love everybody and we, we want to reach everybody. But as far as your company, your fellowship, mm -hmm. try to 
not hang around with focus breakers. Mm. I call them destiny drainers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> focus, breakers. Destiny. focus breakers or destiny drainers. And again, there's people are going to be people and you can't just say, whoops, I don't want to be around you. <laughs> you can't do that. But what you need to do is make sure that that your focus on the main thing, what is the main thing? Your purpose, your primary passion, your primary passion those kind of things is learn discipline. But I'm saying work on it for your, uh, your succession because you, you know, a lot of people are praying about things that God's already delivered them out of. Oh, They're in their next season and the mind, their mind didn't get the memo. Oh. <laughs> yeah, They're still so talking cool. about things he already worked out for them. We've got to, we got to stay up with our spirit man. That's called renewing the mind. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 20 and verse 9. I love this scripture because I, I feel this way. It says, His word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. Wow. His word was in my heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. He could not. There was times when he wanted to quit. Read the story. He wanted to just say, that's it. Who needs this? But he said, I can't. Because my passion is greater than my pain. Y'all been there? Mm -hmm. My passion is greater than my pain. My purpose is greater than what I'm going through. He said, it's like a fire or a passion shut up in my bone. Passion, if you want to write this down, it's on your sheet. The passion is the same as Holy Spirit fire. Mm -hmm. Passion is the same as Holy Spirit fire. Now, I'm not saying passion is the Holy Spirit. But I'm saying it's the same as the Holy Spirit <coughs> fire that the Holy Spirit produces. God's life in you is passionate. Hallelujah. The Greek word for fire that we're comparing passion to is P-U-R. Pure. Where we get our word uh, purify. So the fire or the passion, the fire of God in us purifies us, focuses us, cleanses us. Amen. Now this is important because the other word for pure is pyros, where we get our word for fireworks. You know what? I'm looking that, that God's people will be in situations where they are challenged and excited again to where they're not just going and through the motions, but there's something that's stirred up in their belly. Amen. Amen. That says, you know what? I'm on fire yes. for God. And it doesn't mean I'm just re super religious. It means, no, I've, I've got a fire shut up in me that is full of creativity. It's full of innovation. It's full of ideas. It's activation. The Holy Spirit is a person. His passion is his activation, what he does. We are baptized in activation. <laughs> you know, thank goodness when the Holy Ghost moves in a church service, we go, we're excited, we fall out, we, we dance, we're jumping and all of that. But God actually intended some of that to follow us out into the world mm -hmm. to where now we know strategies on how to apply that ignition, that fire into creative ways to reach people. Your passion never leaves you. Thank you. 
just like your purpose can never leave you. But the enemy will try to make you think he snuffed it out. And the way he does that is by trying to block your vision. Mm -hmm. Make it appear like nothing's happening and all that other garbage. Yep. So what he will try to do is pervert your passion. Yeah. That's what he can do. This is where people get in trouble. Here's some other words for apathy or for passion that got messed up. Apathy is literally misplaced passion. People become yeah. apathetic because, they lost because their passion got driven down so far they can't see it. It's there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's so true. Mm -hmm. You ready for this one? Lust is perverted passion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Lust is really passion that just got perverted mm -hmm. to where now it's applied to things that satisfy temporarily. Yeah, right. Right. Yep. Oh, really, you know, who can it harm, you know? Well, it's harming you uh, because it just got, got you off course. <coughs> Hatred is trapped passion. Hatred is actually a form of passion. It's just passion that got trapped. It feels like it has nowhere to go. So it's going to lash out. It doesn't have an expression. So it literally... It, now get this, mm. it literally wow. becomes violent because there's the positive violent and there's the negative violent. Mm. But when passion gets trapped, it becomes the negative violent. So people say, I'm taking things into my own hands and they become physically violent. Mm. But it's a form of passion wow. that got trapped. They feel like they, there's no way to express right. what's going on in them, so it turns into the negative. Oh, that, that's wow. the only way they can express it. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 It, does. it does. Have you ever just felt mad and didn't know why? Yeah. It's usually because it's a matter of something is blocking your passion. Or a goal that wasn't achieved. You yeah. just feel like you want to lash out and smack somebody. When your goals are blocked, <laughs> then you feel like. Because it's, it's passion you know, the thing with this is this kind of situation is usually um, put in the back burner. What I mean by that is it's subdued. Yeah. Until yeah. without your permission, it comes it's, out and it lashes close. at somebody. Uh -huh. Sometimes, you know, a person can lash out at someone and they're not even mad at them. They're mad at what happened in traffic. Yeah. And we got to be aware of these things. Anger is not bad, but hatred is. And selfish passion is greed. Mm -hmm. Greedy people are just, it's not about just about the money, it's they are selfish. Mm -hmm. They've said, what matters is self. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to get it any way I can. It doesn't matter. And they're passionate about it, but it is totally off course. Yeah. But we have to say, God, deal with me. See if there be any wicked way in me. Search me, O Lord. Search me, O Lord. And not just say it with flowery words, but seriously mean it. Because why? Because I want to tap in to the passion that will reveal my purpose and give me clarity and focus to produce. The stuff we have yet to produce that we haven't produced but we will produce. Yes, yes, yes. We, we stay focused. And passion is a drive. Yes. Mm -hmm. But don't you want somebody at the wheel? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> <laughs> so these words, these key words, apathy and lust and hatred and greed are all forms of passion that got out of focus. And right now, you and I have the position of, uh, what am I trying to say? The, we have an advantage because when we are in God-ordained passion, the motivation 
overcomes the world. Mm -hmm. Because we have the authority and the power to produce something that even the devil cannot stop. Right. Jesus moved with come passion. Literally, he was motivated by God and it come past everyone. Mm -hmm. It also comes from the word come. Mm -hmm. He come past everyone and everything he touched with the Father. Wow. Yes. Our God is a consuming fire, enveloping all we do and all we are to burn on so we don't burn up. Vision, God ordained vision, is the expression of passion. Remember, it's the eyes of our why. <laughs> and it always has with it, accompanying with it, passion. And eventually, sometime, we're going to get into how this forms a team. Did you notice there's not many people who know how to work with a team? No. Everybody wants to be a prima donna and take charge. No. Uh, but... But passion, united with vision, God-ordained vision, will reveal to you your company, your team, or your church, or your business. Did you ever notice that corporate vision unites many God-ordained visions into becoming one? We are one body, but many members. You're unique. Mm -hmm. I'm unique. I shouldn't be a threat to you because I'm not exactly like you. No. I should be a compliment to you. Yes. Because corporate vision isn't everybody catching one vision. Right. Corporate vision is everybody seeing their vision and passion in the corporate vision, yes, making right. them yes. one. Amen. This is why marriages that's fail. So Marriages fail because the passion was there with what they thought. Yeah. The two become one, she's going to become me. <laughs> no. The two become That's one, I'm going to become her. Yeah. <laughs> but then neither <laughs> wants to be the other one. Then the one criticizes the other one because they're not like them. <laughs> Until we realize, wait a minute, two becoming one doesn't mean that somebody ceased to exist. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Give a little marriage one tips mind. here. Oh but, yes. but the two becoming one means yes. there's still two distinct people in one when corporate setting. Yes. An agreement. Yeah. The same because no one catches your vision. No, they can't. But your vision ignites passion to capture their vision. Nobody captures your vision. But a true corporate vision will cause them to capture their place in yours. Does that make sense? Yes. So a lot of times you feel like I'm just going and being a part of everybody else is doing yeah. something and helping them get it done. And that's fine. There's a place for that. Yes. It's called service and servanthood. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, when it comes to vision, you can't just forever live out somebody else's vision. At some point, your passion will want to identify your vision and how it fits the corporate vision. Does that make sense? Yes. Wow. That's awesome. So marriages work when two complement as one. Yes. Two individuals. This is really different than me. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm very different than her. Yes. She's Mexicano. I'm Americano. Yes. We complement each yes. other. Yes. She yes. she no longer tries to make me what she thinks I ought to be, and I no longer I try to make you. her, but we celebrate who we really are. Yes. Would you help us spread this? But don't you all think we need yes. to spread it? Yes. Tell your friends. Invite them to watch some of these. Uh, 
and, and get some people online with us and let's let this thing go viral because it's for his glory and for you. It's not about building up Rick Kendall. It's about building up who you are in the kingdom. And I got the line underneath me. I look like one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> All right, well, we're going to go now. And until next time, to the king. To the king.